Good morning. Today we'll be talking about suction therapy. Um, in front of us today, we'll have three different types of suction therapy machines. Uh, suction therapy is something that can be used to help adequately clear any type of fluid blockage or mucus buildup or uh, upper respiratory blockage as well and sometimes some drainage from surgical wounds. Um, these are vacuums for bodily fluids. Uh, we have a stationary suction machine here, a portable suction machine here, and an intermittent suction machine here for gastric suctioning. We'll go through all the different setup and operation of all three, proper pressure settings and connections of the canister, the filters, and all of these suction accessories that you would use to apply suction to an actual patient. Every time we deliver a suction machine, it will always be delivered with the actual machine itself. It will be delivered with what we call a yank hour with bulb tip, and with vent tube, and six foot tube. This tubing and the yank hour in the plastic package will be representative of this large, hard plastic yank hour with bulb tip here and the suction tubing here, which is a universal suction tubing that can be used with different type of suction accessories when applied to the patient that we'll, we'll, we will uh, speak about and go over. Every basic suctioning will require some type of suction tubing and yank hour. Other suctioning such as gastric suctioning or upper respiratory suctioning may require the use of a catheter or possibly a five-in-one connector if we we're going to be connecting to a patient's gastric tube or NG tube if fitted with a G tube or NG tube for gastric suction. Now, whenever we were going to set up a suction machine for proper use, um, you would always have a canister for fluid collection You always want to make sure you are inspecting the canister itself for any type of visual cracks. Uh, any type of visual cracks that may cause an air leak. Any type of air leaks will not allow the suction pressure to build properly and will may not have enough pressure to clear any type of blockage that the patient is experiencing. This canister cap must be sealed completely. Um, when you do take it off, you do have a overflow stop protection float at the bottom of the canister cap here that the float will rise if the fluid does become too full and to prevent the fluid from passing the point of the canister and entering the device, we will have two secondary measures. So the float on the inside of the canister cap is the first uh, protection for the machine. And then you have a suction filter, which is hydrophobic, which is secondary protection for the fluid from entering the machine if the canister were to become too full um, past the point of collection. This canister um, fluid hydrophobic filter protector has an elbow. The elbow is usually connected directly to the center point of the canister cap just directly above the float fluid protector connected to the hydrophobic filter. And then you have a second piece of tubing that will connect to the outlet that would be directly coming from the actual suction machine. When making your firm connections, we wanna make sure that all tubings are firmly sealed and pressed on until they're firmly connected. Where I place the actual canister here is the receptacle holder so that you can actually store and hold the canister as it's being filled. Either on the side of your machine here or on the side of the machine here, you may find your power button. Every machine will be equipped with some type of handle for you to be able to hold on to, to be able to carry and place or setting. You do have a air pressure gauge or dial gauge that will allow you to set the vacuum pressure set the millimeters of mercury. And then you will also have a pressure control dial that will allow you to increase or decrease your suction vacuum pressure. Whenever you initiate power, you should hear the air compressor turn on 
that will allow you that will um, let you know that the actual machine is functioning and running and operable and then you are ready to prepare to connect to the rest of the tubing and the connections that were going to be placed to the patient for a proper suction. Most continuous suction therapy that is provided from a stationary or portable suction would usually last maybe five seconds, just as long until the actual suction um, therapy works and clears any type of fluid blockage or mucus buildup that the patient experiences. When it comes to the tubing, you do have two female connectors. One side will connect to the front port on the actual canister cap. The other side will connect to the actual yank arm with bulb tip or catheter. If I may state, there is a larger port on the back side of the canister cap. That is for emptying and drainage so you, that you do not have to remove the whole canister lid if attempting to actually pour it out and drain the fluid. While performing suction therapy, anything, any open hoses that are not going to connect to a hose or a tubing coming from the machine should be capped off and sealed. Once you place everything in place, you have your tubing connected. You would have your yank arm with bulb tip that would connect to the front side if you're gonna do oral suctioning to help clear anything out of the oral passage. You can turn on your machine and then you will be ready to perform your actual suction therapy. If you want to be sure before performing suction on the patient to make sure you have proper suction therapy, you can actually take a container of fluid and stick the tip of the actual yank hour into the fluid allowing it to enter into the collection canister. Uh, keep in mind whenever making any type of connections you always want to try to prevent from touching the actual tip of the actual yank hour or the portion of the catheter that's going to be entering into the patient's uh, oral passage or upper respiratory area. As we said, the tubing is universal. So if you were going to change the yank hour for a catheter, we would go ahead and simply disconnect the tube and then get the desired catheter size that is needed according to your patient and then finish the connection back to your tubing. Now catheters will come in different sizes, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. The number represents the thickness of the tubing and the larger um, hole of the inner diameter of the tubing. The larger the number, the thicker the tubing and larger the inner diameter. The smaller the number, the smaller the tube, the thinner the tubing, excuse me, and the smaller the inner diameter of the actual tubing. This part here is a plug that would allow you to plug at the base of the catheter to be able to perform and open a vacuum circuit so that there is vacuum pressure only when pulling the catheter out and not when actually inserting the catheter into the patient. We also have other accessories, such as a pediatric yank car for pediatric purposes, or a little sucker for also pediatric or infant purposes as well. All accessories will connect to the same suction tubing in the same manner as the yank car with bulb tip or the catheter. So that is an example of the little sucker connected we will disconnect that one. And then this is an example of the pediatric yank hour connected. So depending on the patient, size, and age, it is depending on the type of accessory that may need to be ordered when placing an order for a suction machine. As we stated, the stationary suction machine and the 
portable suction machine both provide continuous suction. You always want to make sure that you are um, in charge of the suction process and you are actually uh, keeping focus on the patient to make sure that any type of suction applied to the patient does not last any longer than needed and only long enough to clear any type of, any type of blockage that is um, starting to accrue or, or um, build up during the patient's therapy. Now, in order to adjust pressure, you would have to turn on your machine. Once your machine is operable, if your tubing is connected and there is free air flowing through the tubing, any type of adjustments made to your pressure control knob will not have a great direct impact on the pressure itself and how it increases or decreases. You will need to either close the circuit by taking your tubing and folding it in half, causing a kink in the line. That kink in the line will um, Im imitate a fluid buildup and then you will be able to see your actual true pressure setting on your suction machine. Then you may go ahead and turn your pressure control dial counterclockwise to decrease, clockwise to increase, in order to dial in the, uh, the specific pressure needed in order to clear any type of adequate blockage. It's always better to start somewhere in between, in the middle of, of the actual pressure that is available so that you can not cause any more disruption to the patient than needed. So, um, whenever dialing in your setting pressure, we always want to make sure we start halfway so we do not cause any more discomfort than needed to the actual patient. If it is not strong enough, then you can increase from there until the actual desired pressure uh, is, that is needed is dialed in and then you can adequately clear any type of fluid blockage. When it comes to the portable suction machine, it operates in the same manner as the stationary suction machine where it provides continuous suction therapy. However, it is portable so that means it is battery operated. We do have a port on your backside here of the machine that allows you to plug it in for charging and your power button as well. Um, so we can have a close up of what the dial looks like. You can see the dial here and the gauge there. And this is the handle where we would actually hold it from. It does come with both a portable charger for the car as well as a charger for the home environment and a carry case or carry bag to allow you to uh, be a little bit more discreet when carrying around the portable suction. It does use the same type of collection canister as the stationary suction machine which is the 800cc canister. Same rules apply. Make sure there are no cracks or air leaks within the canister itself that would cause the suction pressure not to build properly. Any open spaces on the canister lid should be capped off. The hydrophobic filter with your suction elbow and tubing will connect to the center point of the canister itself. You would place the canister inside the receptacle. The other end of the tubing that comes from your actual hydrophobic filter will be placed directly on the outlet from the actual suction device and machine. And then, just as on the stationary suction machine, we would use the same length of tubing to connect to the front of our suction canister, and then apply either the yank hour, the catheter, For adult or the little sucker or pediatric yank hour for infants or pediatric children. Once you're ready, 
and have all your connections connected, you will go ahead and power on and then be able to continue and apply any type of suction therapy needed to adequately clear any type of fluid buildup. Same rules apply. If you wanted to see the pressure itself, you would first kink your tubing and then you can go ahead and turn your control dial here to increase or decrease your pressure um, for your suction therapy. As we said previously, the canister will be starting to collect fluid and drainage from the patient. Once you're ready to drain, simply uncap this, empty that out for disposal, then recap and reuse for the next suction therapy. Now, as we move over to this side of the table, we would see here a larger suction machine as stated before, an intermittent suction machine, also used for gastric suctioning. Most of the time, your stationary or portable suction machine will use for oral suctioning or upper respiratory. With an intermittent suction machine, um, we do have a larger canister for collection and it is commonly used for gastric suctioning that is uh, directly applied to either the patient's G tube or NG tube, which is directly connected to the large or the small intestine of the patient. We do have a 2000 cc canister for collection versus your 800 cc canister um, because the patient can be connected to the intermittent suction machine for longer periods of time, unsupervised, as far well as the Suction therapy that's provided from a continuous suction machine is always supervised and only lasts maybe five or ten seconds at the most until the actual blockage is clear. You have your canister lid. Any open spaces should be closed and capped off that are not going to connect directly to a tubing. We would connect the elbow coming from a hydrophobic filter. Place the canister in the receptacle holder. Connect the other side of your tubing to the outlet on the front of your suction machine. Whenever you're ready for use, the extra connector that would be delivered along with your yank hour with bulb tip without vent and six foot two you will also receive what they call a five in one connector. It has five different size barb fittings on each side so that you connect to different size of NG tubes or G tubes that may be fitted on the patient. We would use the same universal suction tubing that is connected to the yank hour and connect this one end to the open port that's on the canister lid. And then you would take the other side of your suction tubing and connect that to one end of your five in one connector. And then the opposite end would connect to the patient's G tube or NG tube that is fitted on the patient. The reason for the intermittent setting is because they do not want continuous suction pressure applied to the G tube or NG tube any longer than needed. It will pressurize, be able to move some fluid through the tubing and collect it, and then depressurize, allowing um, the small intestine and the large intestine a break from the pressure that is being provided to help move and collect the waste as, being, as it's being produced. You have your off and on button here just above your outlet. And then after you initiate power, you actually have two separate type of control knobs here. 
you have a white knob that would allow you to select your regular or INT for intermittent suction. On regular, it would act as a continuous suction machine providing continuous suction pressure just as a portable suction machine or a stationary suction machine. In that instance, then you would be able to use your yank hour for oral suctioning or your catheter for upper respiratory. When connecting to the G-tube, however, you never want it set on your regular setting for continuous suction. You always want to turn the white knob and make sure it's set to INT so that it will be on the intermittent setting. The way the intermittent setting works is when kicking your tubing, it would allow your pressure to build and hold, which will allow some fluid to be moved from the patient's intestines through the G-tube and into the collection canister. As it moves some of the bodily fluids out, it will depressurize itself, allowing the small or large intestine a break in between moving the fluid from the patient. And then it will pressurize once again and continue in the same cycle fashion in order to help move the fluid slowly as it's being created and produced um, as the body is metabolizing all of the nutrients and food that the patient has consumed. Of course, once you're ready, place that off, turn that off, and disconnect from the patient's G-tube. If it was full, and you are going to be disposing of any type of collection that has been created. Keep in mind, all of these machines are powered by electrical power, so they will need to be plugged into a ground electrical outlet for proper and safe function. The portable suction machine is battery operated and will need to be recharged in order to sustain a fully charged battery. On a fully charged battery, it may last up to two hours of suction therapy operation.